payments until January 2022. Share the gift of love. Make it a merrier Christmas with the communal. Exciting prizes for members throughout the promotion. For we are your Santa this Christmas. Offer ends January 31st, 2022. Lending terms and conditions apply. Communal show Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store now has amazing deals, special discounted prices on wedding sets, watches and selected jewelry. We sell top brand jewelry and watches like Citizen, Guess and Klein and G-Shock all at the best prices in Grenada. We also buy scrap gold and offer the best deals and customer service on the island. Opening hours Mondays to Saturdays 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store Located at the Esplanade Mall, St. George's, Grenada. Visit our brand new remodeled store or call us on telephone number 414-3114-232-1234 or WhatsApp 533-1581. Sale is on for a limited time only. only. Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform. Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Free delivery available within select locations or in-store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less? Live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. Rich, smooth, delicious, and packed with vitamins, that could only be one thing. It's a Rika Almond Beverage. Great on its own are a lovely addition to smoothies. So call Superb Distributors on 435-2948 or visit us at Tempe St. George's today. Remember, Rika is life and life is Rika. All right, all right. So we'd like to say welcome, welcome one and all to another Mikey Live program. I am your host, Mikey Hutchinson. And yes, we are coming to you live from the Spice Isle of the Caribbean. Folks, this is where it all happens. We are talking about the good, the bad, and the Mikey. Things that you don't hear anywhere else. You hear it on the business. This is what we talk about. We have no horse in race. So we tell you as it is. You understand? So all you yeah, a real thing to tell you about, you know. And by the way, Kalai Green boy, um, he's still late to be late to rest tomorrow, God's willing. The former Governor General and Education Minister. All right, FINA scholarship awarded to national swimmer. We'll talk about that as well as um, we'll have a COVID-19 update for you. Grenada remembers a tragic day in its history. We'll talk about that as well. And a sports icon has died. Yeah, by Shakta. Yeah, can I name it as call him in a but we'll talk about that in a moment. All right, very from flamboyant guy. So we have a quite quite a few things to talk to you about tonight. And the business. All right. So all the best all yourself. You know what I mean? Share the thing, share the thing, share the thing. Just know that someone sharing tonight's program will receive some free credit compliments. Digicel. All right, so go ahead. And share the business. Now we gotta let you know the headlines was brought to you through the kind compliments of Coach Grenada Limited Digital Nawasa, the Housing Authority of Grenada, Real Value IG Supermarket, and Superb Distributors. So we take a quick break, and when we come back, it'll be real news in Oli Lili Lolo. So go ahead and share the business. We are coming back. The Housing Authority offers products that people can choose from products that people can access and I think anyone looking to build just call the Housing Authority of Grenada. The service was um, superb. Every step of the way they collaborated with the owner, they collaborated with the builder. The builder himself was really good. For what I've seen them do, I have to say that 
from buildings they have done in the past to where they are now. They have come up to speed with modern trends, modern designs, and I think I will advise anybody to choose the Housing Authority of Grenada. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, fancy, and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers. Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to secure in the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you. We enjoy the luxury of a quality water supply. But it can come to this. Have adequate storage. All righty, so thank you again and welcome to tonight's program. Now, boy, the first thing that we need to tell you about, boy, um, you know, we, we find that the, the athletes, they are doing really good. Yes, we were talking, about, we were telling you about CC on Friday, and then we have another um, student athlete we need to tell you about, all right? We just pull up the, um, the business on the screen there, and we're going to show you the thing. All right, again, I see that we have quite a bit of um, first-time viewers on the program, so we would like to say hello to you, all right? So that's the first thing that we need to tell you. National swimmer, all right? Jenny B. Um, Benoit has been awarded a swimming scholarship from the International Swimming Federation, FINA. The scholarship will run from January to August of 2020 at Arizona Aquatics, Florida. Yeah, San Benoit has participated in several regional and international swimming competitions, such as the Caribbean Islands Swimming Championships, CISC, then there's the Caribbean and Central American Swimming Championships, the CARIFTA, and the FINA Junior World Swimming Championships, which were held all right, in Budapest, Hungary, in August of 2019. Now, Benoit is a gold, silver, and bronze CI. SC medalist, a CCC, a CC can a silver medalist and character bronze medalist. All right, um, so he, I mean, this is this is good stuff right here. Now, um, in 2019, he was also awarded the National Sports Award for academic excellence. All right, so that's good. Now he departed Grenada on uh, Thursday, January 14, for Florida, where he will train with Azura Aquatics. Okay, so, all the gig, oh man, clap the man. And you realize some of these athletes that are making it big are also very good students. I know that sometimes parents may have concerns if their children get into athletics, then it will affect their academics. Whereas there is a possibility for that, but what is the record saying? You understand? These people, these young stars are going out there, making a name for themselves, making the country proud, getting scholarships and um, opening pathways to a bright future. You know what I'm saying? So I see nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? All the, let me go. Preparation for the funeral of former Governor General, so Carly Glean, into its final stages. He's afforded a state funeral. All right, and that's scheduled for 1 p.m. tomorrow at the St. Peter's Catholic Church in Gulf St. John. There's a little session going on right now. Now, the proceedings will include uh, uh, official tributes by the Governor General, Her Excellency Sir, um, Dame Cecil Lagonade. There's going to be a um, tribute from the Prime Minister, Dr. Mitchell. You know, now today the body of Sir Carlisle was laid in state at the Parliament Building at uh, Mount Welldale, where the public was invited to pay their last respects all right, to him. Um, that happened until four. Quite a bit of people um, attended and participated in that. The Prime Minister, um, Dr. Mitchell himself, he was there and he was, you know, speaking about, you know, the kind of person uh, Sir Carlisle Glean was. I think I it's a uh, fitting tribute to a person who was given a life of service.
to his country and uh, a service that has been exemplary in many, many forms. And I know it myself because I had the opportunity to interact with him on issues of concern. And I know he's the principal position that he took. And um, so I, I think it's a good thing for us as a country to pay a tribute to the special public servant on his departure and getting his, the rest that he so richly deserved. Um, so I, it's, a, of course, a difficult day for all of us because when one was done well for us and is, um, is leaving us, it's uh, the one that makes emotions, knowing that he's going to his, his heavenly father, but at the same time, knowing that he is leaving us, it's, it's got to be tough for the family members that are here with us today and for all of us in the Grenada Car Company, Martinique. So I'm um, honored on behalf of the government and people of the country to pay a special tribute and to view Sakala resting today. And they're saying that he was a different kind of a politician. You know, although he was into his politics, but he did so with, with, a, with, a, with a bigger picture. You know, um, so Carlisle was a really, really, really humble man in the community where he lived in, in, in St. John. You know what I mean? He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very good man. And the Prime Minister alluded to that, even saying that his mother reminded him of how important Carlisle Glynn was, even to, to them and, and, um, and their family as well. Or a moment for politics. But you would have been on the other side of Sir Carlisle's political endeavors for many, many years. Yeah, it, uh, difficult, you know, in the sense that you didn't feel that he was in, in, in opposition because he was not one of those who saw politics as a time for personal um, condemnation and attacks and people sometimes innocently so. So it was difficult. You never saw Carla in a so although he occupied a position of political act, um, area, but you didn't feel that. In fact, when I, this morning when I was talking to my mom, and she remember that uh, the family know that he used to be home by us regularly <laughs> <laughs> when he was principal of Happy Larson yes. School. Yes. And um, and you know when a 99 year old. Mo that's a warning. Speak to you, but uh, <laughs> listen. listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that was some engagement that happened at Mount Weldale. Well, um, the grandson of Sir Carlyle Glean, that's uh, Carlyle Glean Jr., spoke of his grandson, uh, of his, his grandfather as well, and he says it's a really tough loss for the family. I mean, it, it's obviously a, a big loss for us. Um, it, it, we held our uh, granddad in the highest regard um he, he uh, despite all of the um the the accomplishments and the accolades um he was a very humble he person grand he, he was still he was granddad, granddad. <laughs> exactly he was, he very humble first very and simple. foremost yes S sorry i say first and foremost he was grandpa he was grandpa that's right yeah that's that's right granddad so um yeah no he um but he was just uh, the the leader of the family but in a very um quiet and humble uh with a very quiet and humble approach towards doing that and and that's that's what we all kind of fed off of and we continue to try to carry that forward yes thank you very much he's a really good really really good it uh, was a good man you know i can tell you that he was a good man all right um so we are moving on uh there are so many sad things, so stories. I wish I, I could have skipped a few of them because, you know, sometimes it could be a little bit heavy. But remember, the 16th of January was a, 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 a sad day in the history of our country several years ago in Cotton Bailey. Remember, it happened on the 16th of January, 1991, where a big stone, a big, big boulder, you understand a rock, a huge rock, fell on a bus named Greenleaf, I think was the name of the bus, right? And uh, it claimed some lives. And so some of you might be seeing 
um, have, 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 have seen this, this image before, you know, um, in the moments leading up, to, uh, well, right after that, that incident. And so we have, to, we have to always remember those times and remember the lives that were lost in this incident. Uh, some of you might be seeing uh, some of these images for, for the first time. Yeah, um, those of you who were on the scene, you remember this. You remember the mood of the people. There, um, there were a lot of people who, who looked curiously as emergency services tried to attend to those who were injured. You understand? Um, but there was very little. There was very little that uh, the, the, the medical um, practitioners could have done at the time. It was a large boulder that, that took the life of these, of these people there. You know, and so we pay tribute to, to them um, and their families. Some of the names, Avis Dixon, Black Bay St. John, Dwight Frederick, Victoria St. Mark, Ron Jurakan, Digopis St. Mark, Derek Jaldo, Digopis St. Mark, Jarvis Thomas, Victoria St. Mark, Alvin Alexander, Victoria St. Mark, and there was one named Kezia from Victoria St. Mark as well. And so we have um, all these things about the history, about all, oh, you realize that Grenada's priority and our history is very twisted, that you can pick up a book, a textbook that you have in school and read all about our skewed history. Eh? Because when I say skewed, I, would, I say so because it, 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 it is from the perspective of the storyteller or, 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 of the, or, or of the author of that story. Mm? And we have been over the years teaching all our children in school about these things that are so insignificant to us and to who and what we are. But our, our history that involves us our own people that we know and knew. Nothing. Morris Bishop International Airport. You come on the airport, you don't know, you don't have a, you don't see a picture of Morris Bishop. Independence Day. Celebration. You don't know who and what you're celebrating. And independence from what and from whom. Yes? Monuments are erected all over the place. All over the place. Taking prominent real estate. Prominently seen. Um... With, with people of other nationalities and with due respect to them um, all over the country. But with our own heroes and, and, and with our own history, you get like a pebble with a thing there, you have to get thing and wipe it to see what mark on it. Well, we are so, our priorities are just crazy. It's just all over the, the, the place, if you ask me, where, where our history is concerned. Yeah? Anyway. I ain't coming for that. I tie bone. You know what I mean? I ain't had no bread for that. Okay, so we're moving on. Oh, dear boy. Um, I couldn't find a better picture, so you have to forgive me. Um, so, hi, miss. But we're not talking about her. We're talking about him. You know him as the starter at uh, your sports events. And as, as, as Cheney Joseph says, the president of the GFA, very flamboyant, always busy. You understand? So, he's from River Road. He has died. You know, we just got word about him that he has died. So, he used to work in the Ministry of Sports. You understand? Um, he was a max a maxman. Fitzroy, Chungs, Checkley. You understand? Y'all know him. Yeah? So. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, let me move. Let me move, let me move, let me move. You know what I mean? Tough, 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 tough. Now, um, as it relates to our COVID-19 Figures well, for uh, some of you would have seen that already. 
Um, but for those of you who missed it, we um, did quite a number of tests. Well, Saturday alone, Jesus! The Ministry of Health recorded the highs, I think. It should be. Um, a number of tests in one day over the weekend on Saturday. You understand? Well, let's talk about yesterday first. So yesterday there were 872 tests that was done and there were 17 positive cases that came up from that. Five persons hospitalized. So 80, 872 tests, 17 positives. So that takes us to a positivity rate of 1.9, which is very good. Um, 193 individuals um, recovered and there were one additional death. So all this is happening again. We are losing lives to COVID-19 still, even with Omicron. Now, we, we, we now go to 204 in terms of the cumulative deaths that we have had owing to COVID-19. 204. So, so far, during this new wave, we have lost four lives. And if we are to go back to Saturday, what we can tell you is that, yes, there were a total of 1,919 tests that were conducted. And out of that, there were 166 new cases of COVID-19. So if you do the math, that takes a positivity rate to 8.7%. And uh, there were um, no deaths on Saturday, but there were 32 recoveries. All right. And uh, yes, and that's according to the Ministry of Health. Okay. How are we looking for time? Grenada is included in a new study on vaccine hesitancy in six Caribbean countries. Well, six Caribbean community CARICOM countries, right? Um, so the study uh, commissioned by the United Nations Children Emergency Fund, that's UNICEF, and funded by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, examines the extent of and reason for vaccine hesitancy and whether the minds of vaccine hesitant persons can be changed. The study conducted by the Barbados-based Caribbean Development Research Services, Inc., cadres, was also conducted in Barbados, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Trinidad and Tobago. Now more than 5,000 um, individuals were surveyed and according to the study, 24% of the unvaccinated respondents believed that the vaccines were developed too quickly, too quickly and are uncertain about what is in them. One in five said that taking the vaccine is a choice and they simply choose not to do so. However, the study sees room for optimism providing insight into what might change the minds and saying that as a high as 51% cite the need for more medical and scientific information. Over 40% want to know more about side effects and efficiency. Now, 30% want information on the important, in, sorry, on the impact of the vaccine on sexual health and their ability to have, you see that I tell all you, the, the, the messaging, all doesn't want to listen to people like me. All they go and get people to do big stories, spend a set of money and give Peter Wickham and them to spend a whole time money, they go and cack up foot and buy drop, drop back, drop, drop top vehicle and all kind of thing. You understand when all the all people telling all the last straight. You understand? We tell all the last straight. It, these are the things that people want to know. So get to the information that people wants to know about. Don't just tell them to take the vaccine. Tell them why. I took the, I took the vaccine because they say COVID does make you have problems down there. And listen, this is important. This is like priority to me. You understand? Nobody messing with nothing around. You know what I mean? No, sir. I listen, and I'm, I'm willing to go and tell my story. I took the vaccine, and if all of them record me, record me. I took the vaccine when I hear COVID to interfere with your business down there. And I say, yes, and I say, well, you know, I had to measure the risk and the, 
opportunities and the benefits and all of that. I said, nothing so. Yeah, I mean it. <laughs> anyway, lately that talk. So I'm taking my chance with the vaccine. But I don't take my chance with COVID. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but still, I don't tell nobody to go and take no vaccine. You know what I mean? Because what I'm saying is, is whatever matters to you. You understand? You choose what side you're going on. You know what I mean? I choose, I go stay up on the, on the side of proper functioning business. You know what I mean? Because if your business is not functioning properly, I mean, well... <laughs> you are an, you are not a man. You know what I mean? You are an, you are missing the M. You know, for the whole community. Anyway, let me talk to you. So, you understand? So they say that people want to know about that kind of stuff. In addition, 39% said that they might rethink their position if they require the COVID-19 vaccination to travel overseas, while 34% may reconsider if it was necessary to get or to keep a job. The study also highlighted respondents' thoughts on, vac and on vaccinating their children. Whereas 62% across the six countries said that they were vaccinated themselves, most were against vaccinating their sons and daughters, with only 24% of preschool, 30% at the primary level, and 48% at the secondary level. Now, they need to tailor vaccine promotion investigations, interventions, sorry, was highlighted. Again, that we cannot deny. You know what I'm saying? Somebody say the vaccine. <laughs> oh, God. Eh. <laughs> anyway, lady, that dog. I don't remember yet that time. If I'm medication messing with my things in a positive way, I ain't mind that too. You know? I ain't mind the other one time, boy. I take a, you know, I said, well, you know, I have strenuous days. I mean, like my days are long and hard. And it's sometimes hard to keep up, you know. But we keep up anyway. So I say, you know what, I'll do like everybody else and take a little something. So I decide I'm going to take ginkgo biloba. You know what I mean? I say, I'm going to take ginkgo biloba, man. Help with this stimulating with the brain and thing. Because, you know, once your brain is functioning properly, like for me, that's good. I tell in my story, you know, take all the time with me. So, all the boy, take your ginkgo biloba, man. You know, it's a medication, it's a little capsule, you know, take it. Cool. First day, boy, take that. I feel, I don't say, I don't feel nothing. I don't feel in that. You know what I mean? Second day, boy. All right, nothing. All right, I going through. We boy going through. Next thing, I find. What going on with you? You know what I mean? Why is that one boss? You know what I mean? Somebody having a party and they didn't invite me. Why is that one? You know what I mean? So I say, all right, you know, little thing does happen. You don't know what's going on. But anyway, if you boy decide to have a party and don't invite you, that's like small thing. You know what I mean? It happens. One day pass. As well, partner, you might at some point in time in your life, you, you might want to take a little rest. You know what I mean? You can't be like that all day. You know what I mean? You had to take a little sleep to that. You know what I mean? It's both of us are here. You know what I mean? All right. But wait, I say, well, wait now. Like, partner, serious? Yeah, your partner look like he's going so calm on that. Panorama. Calypso, Mona, Queen Show, Juve, like you want to party for the whole weekend, dog. You know what I mean? So I say, your wife said, I get worried. <laughs> your wife said, what you want to? Your wife said, hold on, hold on. Your wife said, what? That could be really embarrassing for you to end up in the hospital when you can't be in the cinema. Your boy really know, eh? And I said, well, after four hours, and you realize party's still swinging, you might have to see a doctor. I say, Jesus! <laughs> Yo, imagine Mikey end up in Grenada, any Grenada hospital, private or public, with them kind of situation. Janua! <laughs> you understand? With them kind of situation. Janua! So I had to call up a friend now. I say, you know what? Your boy don't go down so you know that. Call me friend and say, well, what are you going on? I don't know what's going on with me, you know, but I find my, my partner having a party and don't invite me. Oh, wow, it's a whole day and thing passing and, you know, something not right. You know what I mean? And they say, well, 
You're taking any new medication? Well, I say, I ah, just start a little ginkgo, you know, hangle your brain and thing. They say, all right, we'll get back to you. When they get back to me, they say, Mikey, stop taking it. Stop, 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 stop. You know what I mean? Jesus! You want to check out the business? You know what I mean? Yeah, he was a ginkgo. But in that case, he had a positive, well, overly zealous um, side effect that would benefit some, you know, if they are not, if they, you know, they, 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 are, that, they are inclined in that manner. But I'm not so inclined, you know, I'm a good fella. You know what I mean? So I wanted to take care of that situation. But yes, it was a side effect that was in a positive way. So if, and we're going back to the genesis of the story now. So if you take a vaccine and it has a positive, because I see somebody write something on the business here, a positive side effect that, yeah, that can benefit you, well, all the better for you. You know what I mean? But that's a decision for you to make for yourself. You know what I mean? But anyway, lay that talk. I tell the party swinging. You know what I mean? The partner there. I say, well, partner, what's going on with you? I mean, you could have like a fat, but not the whole weekend. You know what I mean? Because I want to sleep. Anyway, lay that talk. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Next talk. <laughs> when we reach, oh Lord, when we script, I lose my script. All right, so right, so anyway, so they are saying that there might be room need to um, tailor the vaccine promotion. All right, interventions, um, and 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 to probably highlight the right things so that they can um, have a better result. All right, from these, from these, um, from these promotions and so on. Now, the study found that what works with one country and with one person doesn't necessarily work with another, and that finding ways to reach the typical vaccine-hesitant individual, young and not working, uh, in the in the formal sector with uh, with targeted interventions, is uh, it's seen as is it is seen as vital. All right. Good. Anyway, let's leave that up. Then we're moving on. How are you looking? Oh, you are here. Cling, cling. My phone ring. Mikey. Problem in St. Patrick's. So I hear. Yeah, I mean, I hear to the grapevine. You know, there was this special meeting that was held out with a particular political party. Why? Yeah, I mean, well, I could say it. the new national party has, you know, I, I'm guessing that um, uh, there is now going to be. Um, Settling of the dust as uh, Grenada gets ready to enter into a new um, uh, political well, campaigns campaigns for the the election you know the election coming up soon and there might be some re um, reservations in terms of who was selected and who wants to be selected and um, members within the constituency. Um, who might think that things are not being handled in the best way and uh, there are some names that are preferred to, to be selected as candidates in some younger persons and, and then there's another fraction that wants um, some others you know, like you know some people who've been there longer you understand so there's this pulling and tugging and so on I say eh you know that's the season that you will be hearing a lot of that so over the weekend, there was talk about NDC and the NDC's um, method of select selecting. Where they're asking for people to get a CV and thing like that. You know what I mean? And, and I think there was one people who were saying that people were giving the opinion that that's a recipe for disaster. You should have people um, pre-selected to hold that position as caretaker and soon to become candidate. You understand? And so, while some saying that this is, might not work, and this might not work, this might not work, and this might work, and this might work, and then the, the new national party have their challenges too. Well, that's according to my sources. You know what I mean? Because I heard there are some names that have been called um, who are likely caretakers or, li or preferred to be caretakers than others. You know what I mean? And, and names calling that. You know what I mean? But we don't get into that. You know what I mean? We don't get into that. Whether yellow, black, or white, we don't get it. We name in that. You know what I mean? Where do we lately that talk? So it is the time for that. It is the time when you go you hear a lot of that happening. But how well can these processes happen without getting out to the public? You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know. We go see. 
We go see Papa. <laughs> Somebody said Mikey took a pill and he's what what icon is that? Wants to go Sokamona Juve Majgra. <laughs> oh god! So anyway, I took a pill in the bees. Anyway, so yeah, boy. So I so I hear anything. I hear names and thing calling. Yeah, you know I mean. So let me see. Who say Boston want to be in and want to be out at the same time? Uh, anyway, let me. Doesn't talk them talk. So let me let that talk. Okay. Oh yeah. Um. What? Whoa, look at the time, boy. We had a roll. We had a roll. What else do we have to tell you? You know, I think. Um. What else do we have to tell you? We can tell you tomorrow. Now there's going to be, because tomorrow, God's willing, is not time sensitive. There's going to be a post cabinet press briefing tomorrow. All right. So I'll be on that. So I'll be, again, asking some questions on your behalf. You could always send me a private message if there's questions that you need to ask on Swanee. But uh, yes, I could go ahead and I could ask uh, some questions on your behalf. As usual, like small thing. And I mean, so that's going to be from 10 a.m. tomorrow, God's willing. Oh, I want to drink some water. Yeah, some carlo soup there. I want to eat a little carlo soup. And so let me take a little break and then come back now. So we have the national report. We have the weather. And hopefully by the time we, can, we come back to you, um, we will also have, sorry, the... Um, the um the dashboard for you all right so let's take the break now and and um we're coming back don't go now i know a lot of want to play thing now don't go steady We're, we're, we're bringing you gifts of love with chair at the communal this christmas we are your santa it's all about sharing the warmth of this season with those you love getting on this special loan taking advantage of great interest rates with no principal payments until january 2022 share the gift of love make it a merrier christmas with the communal exciting prizes for members throughout the promotion for we are your santa this christmas offer ends january 31st 2022 lending terms and conditions apply Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store now has amazing deals, special discounted prices on wedding sets, watches and selected jewelry. We sell top brand jewelry and watches like Citizen, Guess and Klein and G-Shock all at the best prices in Grenada. We also buy scrap gold and offer the best deals and customer service on the island. Opening hours Mondays to Saturdays 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store. Located at the Esplanade Mall, St. George's, Grenada. Visit our brand new remodeled store or call us on telephone number 414-3114-232-1234 or WhatsApp 533-1581. Sale is on for a limited time only. only. Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform. Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Free delivery available within select locations or in-store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less? Live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. Delicious 
and packed with vitamins, that could only be one thing. It's a Rika Almond Beverage. Great on its own are a lovely addition to smoothies. So call Superb Distributors on 435-2948 or visit us at Tempe St. George's today. Remember, Rika is life and life is Rika. The Hobson Authority offers products that people can choose from, products that people can access, and I think anyone looking to build, just call the Housing Authority of Grenada. The service was um, superb. Every step of the way, they collaborated with the owner, they collaborated with the builder. The builder himself was really good. For what I've seen them do, I have to say that from buildings they have done in the past, so where they are now, they have come up to speed with modern trends, modern designs, and I think I will advise anybody to choose the Housing Authority of Grenada. We enjoy the luxury of a quality water supply. But it can come to this. Have adequate storage. Welcome to Yogo. Most of you know us for our food delivery service and our food pass for free delivery from restaurants. But did you know you can also use us for grocery deliveries too? We've just added another 5,000 plus new items to Yogo Supermarket. And stay updated as we add more products and vendors. Yogo Services is our convenient skip the line offering. Let us pay your electric, water, and other utility bills for you. With us, you'll be able to buy tickets, pay your rent, schedule bookings, and other services. Need a ride to get somewhere? Give Yogo Lift a try. Select your pickup location and destination location and wait for our driver to collect you. Never have to worry about how you're going to get to a place again. Please see website or app for our service locations. And sign up now. Grenada pays its respects to a humble and caring man who lived to serve his people. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Monday, January 17th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Acting Governor General Sir Lawrence Joseph, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell and other government officials joined with family members to pay their respects to former Governor General Sir Carlyle Glean, GCMG, whose body lay in state at Parliament House on Monday. Sir Carlyle, who served as Governor General from 2008 to 2013, died on December 21st at the age of 89. Educator, volunteer, politician, caring, humble, a good man were just a few of the words used to describe him as many remembered Sir Carlyle, who also served as Minister for Education from 1990 to 1995. Acting Governor General Sir Lawrence Joseph, while saddened at the loss of a dear friend, is comforted by the good and full life Sir Carlyle lived and his years of service to people. He was a good man, and uh, I admire him for that. Despite our political differences, we had a very good relationship, and he has left an indelible mark on the society of Grenada. So Kalai and myself were very good friends. As I mentioned to the family, he's from Gov, 
my father himself was from Gov. And we had a very good relationship all throughout my life. And um, it's sad when somebody passes on, but I'm of the belief that you enter the spiritual world after you seem to pass from here. And you'll be happy ever afterwards. So Kyle will be afforded a state funeral in keeping with the government's policy on state and official funerals. It will be held on Tuesday, January 18th at St. Peter's Catholic Church in Guelph, St. John at 1 p.m. The Government Information Service will begin its live broadcast at 12.30. The proceedings will include official tributes by Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade and Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell said the state funeral for the former politician is fitting for his many years of exemplary service to Grenada. A service that has been exemplary in many, many forms. And I know it myself because I had the opportunity to interact with him on issues of concern. And I know he's the principal position that he took. And um, so I, I think... It's a good thing for us as a country to pay a tribute to the special public servant on his departure and getting his, the rest that he so richly deserved. Sir Kalel's grandson, Kalel Glean III, is thankful for the years he spent with an exceptional role model whose example and legacy, he says, will live for years to come. Uh, despite all of the... Um, the the accomplishments and the accolades. Um, he was a very humble he was still person. He, he was still he was granddad. granddad. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> very still humble. Good. But he was just uh, the the leader of the family, but in a very um, quiet and humble, uh, with a very quiet and humble approach towards doing that. And and that's that's what we all kind of fed off of and. We continue to try to carry that forward. So Carlisle's body will be entombed at the Douglaston Cemetery. All events can be viewed via GIS platforms. It was truly a Grenada to the world moment over the weekend as the country took the big stage at the National Day at the Dubai Expo 2020. Since the start of the 2020 Expo in October, the Grenada booth has attracted hundreds of visitors who continue to express interest in the island and what it has to offer. The booth highlights Grenada's culture, food, music, art, clothing, attraction sites, and more. During the opening ceremony of National Day, Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Business, and CARICOM Affairs, Honorable Oliver Joseph, said based on the reviews, Grenada stands to benefit tremendously from the Expo. He thanked the United Arab Emirates for the support and strengthening of relations over the years. The two countries established diplomatic relations in 1975. The support extended to Grenada during the pandemic is the only the lasting one made in history of bilateral relations that has been punctuated by immense generosity. I pleasantly recall the generosity of Sheikh Abdullah and the UAE government for the contribution to our parliament building. I wish to assure the government and people of the United Arab Emirates of our deep appreciation for the enduring friendship and partnership, and to assure your government and people of our continuing solidarity as we continue on this journey of building and deepening this relationship. We eagerly anticipate the many benefits to be derived from this expo, including attracting new businesses to Grenada, particularly from the UAE, increasing trade opportunities between our countries, improving people-to-people -people relations among our countries, men and women. Minister Joseph also used the opportunity to invite more investors to do business in Grenada. Investment opportunities abound across a wide range of sectors, particularly in the areas of tourism and hospitality, health and wellness services, education services, agribusiness, and energy development. Grenada therefore remains poised for investment growth with our natural attributes providing fertile ground for investment opportunities, particularly the agribusiness sector. I also take this opportunity 
to extend an invitation to come discover Grenada, not only as a tourist destination, but as a location for doing business. Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Langrenard was given a tour of the Expo Pavilion following the official National Day ceremony. The audience was given a taste of Grenadian culture from local artists Dash and Thamara Sen Bernard, as well as dancers and musicians. Continuing the news, the Central Statistical Office officially launched Census Day on Monday, January 17th with the enumeration of the homeless population throughout the island. The first cohort of census enumerators was dispatched in November 2021 to begin mapping and collection of data, including telephone numbers, head of household, to expedite the on-telephone interview process. Grenada's census was postponed on two occasions as the country experienced spikes in COVID-19 cases. Director of Statistics Halim Brazan said the office will work closely with the Royal Grenada Police Force and the Ministry of Social Development to enumerate members of the homeless population. We'll be launching a mission in all parishes simultaneously to count the homeless population. The Royal Grenada Police Force and the Ministry of Social Development is supporting us in this important endeavor as we strive to leave no one behind in this population and housing census. The second batch of supervisors and enumerators is now being trained to commence work in the field at the end of the month. We are still in the process of assessing this new cohort, the trainees, and we will have one additional training exercise to complete after we have selected this final cohort. We will then be showing them their boundaries, for their respective enumeration districts and they will be dispatched to the field towards the end of the month to conduct their quota of work. Brizan said so far the first group of enumerators who started in November is progressing well. To ensure a safe process, the enumerators will be equipped with face masks, face shields and hand sanitizers in adherence with the COVID-19 protocols. They will also be wearing a security jacket and will be in possession of an identification card which will easily identify them as census enumerators under the Central Statistical Office. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. That's it. Tongue up. All right, that big noise. They're moving out. They're moving out. I took my best shot to keep Grenada moving. Drive out. They move. A message from the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. Captain of the Enchanted Princess, which made its inaugural call to Grenada on Friday, is promising they could be back as early as the first week of February, providing the COVID-19 situation remains under control. The 4,000-passenger capacity Royal Class cruise ship, which is operated by Princess Cruises, arrived here with 1,600 visitors, 1,200 of whom disembarked to enjoy bubble tours and other attractions approved by the Grenada Tourism Authority and the Ministry of Tourism. Captain Mario Cruzin assured that Princess Cruises will continue to follow the protocols in place by the Grenadian authorities to ensure both visitors and locals are kept safe. We have uh, pretty much 100% uh, of people fully vaccinated on board. The crew, the teammates are all vaccinated as well of our guests. But as you know, with this Omicron going on, we uh, still have a procedure in place so that if we have a few cases, we, they follow up the protocol, the isolation and so on and so forth. So it's all 100% in control, yes. We appreciate uh, all uh, the, that the authorities and the uh, 
you know, tourism is doing for the ships to accommodate for us to be here and uh, so that, you know, we can keep cruising, getting the business going on and on and with the hope that uh, in the next couple of weeks things are getting better, not only here, not only on the Enchanted Prince, but worldwide, because as we know, the problem, the issue is worldwide. CEO of the Grenada Tourism Authority, Petro Roach, is pleased that cruise lines are complying with the country's COVID-19 protocols. We have to recognise that Grenada continues to be one of the more strict destinations. The cruise industry has moved on elsewhere where they have free flow of their customers. They're not maintaining them within the bubble concept. But, you know, we're not ready for this. We need to ensure that we always test the local sentiment, test the temperature, and when we feel that we have reached a stage where all of our um, protocols ensure full safety for our people, then we can move on. But at the minute, they understand that when they come here, they have to sanitize, they have to wear their masks, they have to do their social distancing, and um, and I think that it's going to be a long journey, but it's one that everybody signed up to. Finally, in the news, residents of Grand Mall and the Grand Mall Development Organization held an event for senior residents of the community and surrounding communities on Sunday. The event was held at the Grand Mall Community Center. The idea is the brainchild of Sebastian Edgehill, a Grenadian residing in New York. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell attended the event and stressed the importance of acknowledging the contributions made by senior citizens in the development of the country. Every community that has a good group of citizens willing to make sacrifice for others strengthen that community. And what we have here today has to be given the credit must go to that community group who, has, who have initiated, group has initiated this event and brought you out in an afternoon like this to, to be together. The Prime Minister also thanked the organizers for putting structures in place to ensure that COVID-19 protocols were imposed. The message is clear. So I like to see the, the separation of the tables, the organization in general, and the fact that most of our people here are wearing their mask. That's a clear indication of the level of organization and the level of understanding that you have with respect to what is taking place. Chairman of the Northwest constituency, Alistair Bain, said he is proud with the execution and organization of the event. It is indeed a good venture when young persons from within the community take it on their own to sponsor an activity for the senior citizens within the community. So let me again, on behalf of the St. George Northwest constituency, say thank you to Nimrod and Buntin and all the other organizers of this evening's event. We have been through the challenges of 2020 and 2021. In fact, I, I am not certain if 2020 is yet over. But we are resilient, and the people from this community continue to demonstrate that resilience. And we are here this afternoon because several of us have taken the responsibility for our health. During the ceremony, five senior citizens were presented with awards for their valuable contributions in their community. There was also a special performance by Octane the Ban. That story just ended the national report for Monday, January 17th. Let's recap the top story. Grenada pays its respects to a humble and caring man who lived to serve his people. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rikisha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. Thank you very much, Rikisha, and the rest of the GIS news team. And uh, we would have news again, well, we're talking about uh, <coughs> the National Report again tomorrow, God's willing. We want to take a look at the weather. And uh, in the weather, we see that the weather is expected to be partly cloudy with some brief to widely scattered showers as we are experiencing now. Tonight's minimum temperature, 23 degrees Celsius and maximum.
for today was around uh, uh, 30 degrees Celsius thereabout. Um, winds east, not easterly to easterly at 8 to 18 miles per hour. Seas moderate to slightly rough waves 5 to 7 feet in open waters. A marine advisory is in effect and we can expect uh, uh, high tides to be just around uh, 3.45 a.m. Now for a look at the weather for Tuesday. Sun is expected to rise at 6.33 and set at 6.03. The weather is expected to be generally fair and breezy with few brief showers mainly during the morning and night time. Maximum temperature 31 degrees Celsius, minimum 24.5 degrees Celsius. Winds not easterly to easterly at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Seas moderate to slightly rough waves four to, sorry, 5 to 7 feet in open waters. All right. Okay, let's take that again. Winds not easterly to easterly at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Um, uh, seas moderate to slightly rough waves 5 to 7 feet in not easterly to easterly swells. And the marine advisory will remain in effect for Tuesday. Now to say hello to the folks currently tuned in on uh, YouTube, we say blessings to you and uh, thank you for joining us. So I see that my mom is there playing a mass, uh, I see Velma is there and everyone else, thank you for joining us. And uh, as well, we have a few people who are tuned in on Facebook, so where is my, okay, so let me just big up a few people on Facebook, we can't big up everybody, basically the people who are chatting, that's how we get to know who is watching, eh? because you're chatting so that's how we big up the people who are chatting so it's not like we don't want to big you up we only know that you're on if we see your name pop up <coughs> kirin adonna lintona my mom um Liz, blessings to you as well Liz, and ansha is with us as well big up suzette big up um patty patty not patty 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 angel ezra miriam what's going on miriam Um, Meryl and Mr. McQueen and Zilon. I see, I see badges swinging in the place, boy. Kimmy, blessings to you. Somebody lost uh, their card that I... Um, let me see if I can get that card, boy. It's a vaccination card. Yes. Thank you, Kim. Um, the person's name is Rhea Glenna Nichols. So you lost your vaccination card. That card is very important, so you need to get it, all right? Um, it, you're from Happy Hill. Yeah, so if you, you could just send me a message or so, and I'll tell you how you can get it, all right? So, Rhea Glenna Nichols. Yeah, message or call me, and we'll sort it out for you. All right, uh, Shomin. Michelle Zaka Desiree. Uh, Neil is a city. Blessings. Um, Della. Small man, small Monday man. I give you a little lesser small man. Yeah, when, I, when it's time for to see small man, I'll go see small man. When time for him to do the program. For now, <laughs> small man want to try to steal me reading. I say, why is that one boy? Hey, Deborah. Blessings to you. Yes, thank you for writing that out, Shirin. So, so yes, yeah, she go see that. So even though she don't hear it, somebody go show her the comment. Thank you for doing that, Shirin. That's smart. <coughs> That's very smart. Okay, so thanks again, everyone, and may God bless you and the family. Let's go in five, four, three, two, one, and we all say, "Ja, no blessings." Take care.